I don't believe anybody on the Board of Education is considering asking him to resign today. No change in JCPS leadership plan right now, even after an eye-opening 248-page audit details the mistakes that led to the JCPS transportation disaster last August. The audit says a lack of training, preparation, and management led to kids getting dropped off at nearly 10 p.m. on the first day of school. After all that happened, the school board asked for an external audit, and now we have the findings. Wave News reporter David Ochoa has a reaction from one of the school board members. Yeah, the audit paints a picture of a lack of transparency JCPS leadership had, not just with the public, but their own staff. And that led to, student, to the students losing instructional time, and according to the audit, put some students in unsafe situations. At the first board meeting after the transportation disaster, JCPS superintendent Dr. Marty Polio was apologetic. But it was about not anticipating these problems, and these should have been anticipated, and they should have been taken care of over the summer months. There is no doubt about that. 248 pages of problems, according to Prismatic Services in Charlotte. It details a less than transparent environment within the district when it came to the transportation plan. The audit says there was little in the way of active project management, employees noted they feared retribution, and even a leader who wanted to use text instead of emails because they thought texting was less subject to open records requirements. Obviously, we'll be calling upon the superintendent to ensure that the culture within uh, the district is what it, we need it uh, to be in order to run a good, efficient system where people want to work. James Craig is on the school board, which asked for this audit last summer. The audit went final last Monday. Uh, the Board of Education asked for specific responses to individual findings before Tuesday's vote. We received those this morning. Uh, we're receiving the full audit tomorrow night. That'll be on Tuesday night. The same night, the board will vote on the next transportation plan. And it'll be incumbent upon the superintendent to ensure that its findings are incorporated into the district's work going forward. Some of those findings include unsafe Alpha Route bus stops. Anyone who's driven on Bardstown Road knows how busy it can get. The audit says the students would have to cross from this side across all these lanes of traffic to get to their bus stop on the other side. This stop at Bartstown and Bannon Crossing is just one of several stops that were singled out as unsafe for various reasons. We went to six of them all across the city. They included a stop on Broadway where a first grader had to cross the street to get to their daycare. Or a stop that made a student walk a mile down Shelbyville Road, which some parts of don't have sidewalks or crosswalks. In January, I talked to a parent whose son was dropped off at a bus stop by himself at night after a mix-up between his school and his parents. Isaiah Holstein described his feelings when he realized his eight-year-old son was going to walk nearly a mile home by himself. I, I assumed things were going to be really bad. I didn't know, you know, we hadn't gone through anything like that with him about, you know, the crosswalks and actually getting home. Luckily for Holstein, his son made it home safe thanks to a stranger. But his reaction gives a look into the feelings of a parent whose child has to walk far or across busy streets to get to and from their bus stop. The scathing report might make many people lose faith so in the district's the leadership, the but Craig says a change in superintendents isn't on the board's mind. I don't believe anybody on the Board of Education is considering asking him to resign today. The school board meets tomorrow on, to vote on a transportation plan that would see busing removed from magnet and traditional schools. David Ochoa, Wave News.